I climb up. I came from the asses, I rise up. Rise up, rise up. I wonder now, I gotta rise up. Coming up on football tonight, it's a crosstown showdown. Benton and Lafayette meeting here in the early part of the season. Mid Buchanan, third ranked team in Class 1, trying to start KCI play with a win. Can the Dragons get it done at home? And it's a battle of the two top ranked teams in eight man football. Stanberry visiting King City. Highlights from this Grand River Conference battle coming up on Football Tonight. Welcome into football tonight. That's Mitchell Ribrell. I'm Chris Roush. Week three of high school in Missouri. Week two in Kansas. And we get a lot, and we have a lot to get to tonight with a lot of good matchups around this area this week. But first, conference play. We know everybody gets into about week three, week four, depending on how big your conference is, even or odd. But there's one conference game here in town. A lot of eyes on tonight, and of course, it's a crosstown bitter rivals. Lafayette coming off a record-breaking performance, visiting the Southsiders. Lafayette's won the last five games against Benton. Starting the first quarter, opening drive, no score. Lafayette driving, Jaron Saunders looking for Kingston Oliver, but it's picked off by Bryson Brown. Cardinals with great field position following the interception. So on their first drive, trying to get points on the board, Carson Newland rolling to his right, throws toward the end zone as Drake Lawson with the interception. Lafayette back with the ball, but another INT gives it right back to the Cardinals. Inside the three for the Benton. Bishop Rush, the junior, fighting forward for six. Cardinals go up 6 nothing. Fighting Irish, though, find an answer. It's going to be Saunders. Saunders record-breaking with his arm last week. This time, he gets it done with his feet. Touchdown, Irish. Makes it 7-6 with the PAT. This game, physical back and forth. Second quarter, we go Cardinals inside the 10. Guess who they turn to? Rush again. Touchdown, Cardinals. Up 12-7 on Lafayette, but it's hard to slow down Lafayette's offense completely. Saunders again. This time, though, looking down the field. He threw for 698 last week. Not quite the same this week, but he finds Oliver on a crossing route. He's going to outrun everyone. It's 14-12 in the second. Cardinals get a safety for the end of the half. 14 all at the break. But Lafayette wins this one, get two second half touchdowns, they win 28-14. And up in Savannah, the Savages with a non-conference game coming off a 6-0 win against Lathrop last week. Savannah hosting Kirksville up 7-6. Going to the third, Kirksville marching down the field, Isaac Danielson dives into the end zone. He gets a touchdown, two points good, Tigers up 14-7. Tigers force a three and out. Now looking for another touchdown, Drew Chrisman gets the handoff, finds the end zone with ease, Tigers up 27. Savages needing a score. Ethan Dudek, shotgun, takes the handoff, gets hit high, makes the throw into an open receiver who wide open, nobody Ooh. around him. He gets into the end zone easily. Savannah trails 2014. Savannah would battle back, but the Tigers take this one 34 to 28. And the Cameron Dragons on the road tonight in conference play, visiting 2-0 St. Pius, and the Warriors win 48 to 0. Out in Chillicothe, the Hornets hosting 10th ranked team in Class 2, Maryville. Chillicothe 2 0 in the early season. Maryville strikes first at their fourth down stop. Caden Steckline down the sideline. 72 yard score for the Spoof Hounds. It's 7 0 Maryville just like that. Fast forward to the third 15 12 Hounds. Chillicothe, big play, big score. 
50-yard touchdown strike. Hornets go up 19-15 on Maryville, but the Spoof Hounds able to battle back right off the comeback. Spoof Hounds grabbing their first win of the season under a tough non-con schedule. Hounds win 36-25. And plenty more still to come on football tonight, including Central going back on the road. And after two tough weeks to start the year, can Central grab their first win of the season? And number three in Class 1, Mid Buchanan back at home tonight starting conference play hosting Lawson. Can the Dragons start off KCI play with a win? Find out next. Welcome back to football tonight. The Central Indians started off the season with two tough opponents, Fort Osage in Week 1 and North Kansas City last week. But can Central change the luck and grab that first win tonight? On the road again, no score late first quarter down at Belton. Belton's QB, Geo Mack, getting it done against Central's defense. Geo Mack connects with a Quanta Crawford for a 32-yard touchdown. Pirates go up 7-0. Central trying to get something going with the dry solves. Fumble scooped up by Belton's Alex Hill. Tough night for Central at this point. Early second quarter, Indians Will Halsey will try to get something going. Busted outside for a nice 27-yard gain in the Central first down. But outside of that, not a lot going Central's way tonight. Belton gets the victory tonight over Central down there. Central now 0-3 on the year, falling on the road tonight. This one a final score of 52-22. The mid Buchanan Dragons coming off a KCI conference title in 2020, looking to make more history, repeating as champs this year, and it all starts tonight. The Dragons hosting the Lawson Cardinals down in Fawcett. First possession for the Dragons. Rollins, Brandt, the handoff to Blake Hunter. He jukes, cuts back to his left, gets to the sideline. Quarterback Brandt, his lead blocker, and Hunter gets into the end zone for six. And then Xavier Arambula gets the handoff from Brandt and he stumbles into the pile and somehow manages it to get into the end zone. Dragons up 14-0, then Dragons on fourth and short going for it on fourth down. Cardinals get the stop, turnover on downs, but the Dragons would be too much for Lawson tonight and Mid Buchanan wins 36-0. The Dragons get the victory 36-0 and joining us looks like he's getting ready to play video, online video games. I don't know, head coach Aaron Fritz. It looks very nice, I like the headset. Coach Fritz, thanks for coming on with us. You know, I feel like I'm getting ready to play a game of Halo. I are you good at that? Well, no. Fair enough. All right, coach, we'll go to the game now. 36 nothing win, 3 0 on the year, starting off conference play with a victory. Just what did you see from your guys tonight? You know, I thought we came out and played with a little bit more fire um, than we did last week. And I was pretty proud of that. And we got after them right away and um, did a lot of good things in the first half and we were able to kind of coast the second half. Yeah, and with that first, especially the first quarter, you guys going up 14-0, um, you did not get the fourth down on the fourth and short, but after that play, when you got stopped, what was your message to the offense? Yeah, we need to finish the drive. That wasn't very good. Probably a poor play call on my part, um, but it would be better if we finish that drive. We'll get you out of here on this one, 3-0 on the season. We talked about before the year, you know, the team playing with a chip on their shoulder. You seeing kind of that, that physicality? This team has something they want to prove this year, too? Yeah, we're doing okay. Um, we could get better with that and clean some things up, but um, hopefully we have a good week of practice ready for later this week because we know they're going to be physical and play hard and fast. Maybe can head coach Aaron Fritz won a game tonight, 36 nothing. Now he's going to go win at Halo on the rest of his night. Coach, good luck with the rest of that with Halo, Call of Duty, whatever you want to play. It's, it's your night now. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. All right, over in Plattsburgh, the Tigers hoping to get their first win in the season against the undefeated West Platte Blue Jays. Early in the first quarter, Blue Jays able to strike first after a running touchdown by senior Trent Taylor. And the Tigers were ready to answer in the next possession after sophomore Isaiah Howard able to break through the kicking team defense for a 65-yard return. What a great return by Howard. Later that same drive, Howard again. He works to avoid the defensive line and makes a long pass to senior Brock Stegall in the end zone to take the lead. Like last week. Play of the week that they had it there. It was pretty close. Yes, and West Platte goes on to win this one 35-16. North Platte Panthers take on Hamilton's undefeated Penny High School at home. Panthers win the coin toss. They like to kick off 
First half, Panthers, first drive. Saw where Colton Kirkham tries to keep the ball on the ground, but the Hornets defense stands their ground after a couple attempts trying to run the football. Hornets defense, very, very good this year. That's why they're one of the top 10 teams. They get the INT, they get the football later in the drive for Hamilton. They get going, move the ball down the field. First score of the game, senior running back Ty Spear. Hamilton continues to score on offense. They go on to win this one tonight by a final score of 49 to nothing. Over in Gower, East Buchanan hosting the Lathrop Mules. Jump into the second quarter, 14 to seven Mules, but Bulldogs driving. They take a shot at the end zone, double coverage. Falls and Griffin Martin breaks up the pass, but before, same drive, before the half, Connor Mooser looks for Luke Webb tip, but he comes down with this somehow for the touchdown, game tied at the half. But second half was all East Buchanan, they stop Lathrop on the drive, and Trevor Klein gets the handoff, stiff arms one, stiff arms two, spins out of the third and walks in for the touchdown, and East Buchanan takes this one 35-14. Samaria scores from the Grand River Conference. Gallatin falling to South Harrison 20 to 18 in a good battle tonight. And Milan beating Putnam County 49 26. More scores in the GRC tonight. Maysville falling to Polo 17 to 11. And Trenton beating Princeton 57 to 28. When we come back, we head to the land of eight man football. The Bishop of Blonde Golden Eagles, they're off to a 2 0 star. Can they keep it going against a visitor from the Kansas side of things? And the top ranked team in eight man football in a battle with the second ranked team, Stan Baron King City. Highlights coming up next on Football Tonight. Welcome back to Football Tonight, right here on KQ2. Chris Roush, Mitchell Riberall. I know eight-man football. You know eight-man football, and you're from the state of Oregon. They have that out there. Yes, they we do. It's the rules are a little different, but eight-man, I, I love it. So anytime we get a good how much team, different? Oh, 100 yards oh. Know, with like a 11-man. So it's a little different. All right, we're gonna go 80 yards and hard-nosed style of football here tonight with our you know local teams. We go here. We go in this one. Stanberry King City. Here we go, 12-yard touchdown run. Senior Parker Muff to the end zone. Wilds to kind of strike first, go up 8-0. Next possession, Stanbury converts on third and long, kept off with Quaybox touchdown pass to Gavin Cameron. Bulldog not converts a two-point conversion. King City defense wreaks some havoc all game long. Two plays later though, Austin Schwebach pass to his brother Tyler. Ruled down just before the goal line. We need replay in high school. I'm kidding, it would take forever. Then, First seed, Stanberry go on to win this one, 34-32. That's a really good contest, really good matchup between two conference teams. Up at North Andrew, state runner-up Cardinals hosting the Pattonsburg Panthers. Braxton Linville takes the snap and keeps it around the right side. He gets hit right here by number nine, but drags the defender down to the goal line just short of the end zone. Very next play, Andrew Goff gets the handoff, powers it into the end zone, Cardinals up 6-0. And then the Panthers looking to answer Caden Locker. He is in shotgun formation. He's forced out of the pocket, looks left, goes back to his right, scrambles, looks deep, launches it. He's got Sam Coyne wide open for the touchdown. Two-point conversion good. Panthers lead 8-6 midway through the second quarter now. Cards still down 8-6. Linville keeping it again, this time finding the end zone. Cardinals regain the lead 12-8, and they go on to win 70-20. Some more eight-man football scores to pass along. Worth County beating Schuyler County 80 to 12, and then Albany beating Mound City tonight 40 to 32. Kansas football just getting started last week, so some teams just getting their home opener this week. Still to come, we'll head over to check in on the Riverside Cyclones as they get their first home game of the year. And plenty more still to come. Bishop LeBlanc, the Golden Eagles, can they go to 3-0 on the year? Find out next on Football Tonight. Welcome back. The Bishop LeBlanc Golden Eagles find themselves climbing the ranks of eight-man football. To Bishop LeBlanc, we go in this ball game. They're taking on Donovan West in this one. Quarterback Trent Spiker rushes the defense to move the chains. Next play in this one. 
Braden Simmons puts the first points on the board. Mustangs up 8-0. Now time for the Golden Eagles offense, putting up points all year long. More the same tonight. Landon Gardner hands off to Reggie Love, who makes the move, gives a stiff arm, finds the end zone. Eagles down 8-6. Now watch this throw from Gardner. He's an athlete. He can make some throws. Drops back, rolls to his left, down the field to Jake Correll on the sideline. Beautiful throw over the defender. That's in touchdown Golden Eagles. History repeats itself. Touchdowns repeat themselves. Gardner finds Correll again, but this time on the opposite side. LeBlanc is on to win a shootout over Donovan West, 56 to 50. Tough night for St. Joe Christian on the road at Santa Fe, losing this one 68 to 18. And East Atchison beats South Holt 48-0 in Rockport against Concordia. Rockport gets the win 72-34. Platte Valley over Nottoway Valley 54-26 Southwest Livingston. Last year's state champs beating DeKalb 90-40. And here joining us on football tonight is our eight-man football analyst Devin Albertson. Devin, you were down the, the, up at the Stanbury King City game. Uh, that was a wild one. Pretty good defensive battle, low-scoring game. Yeah, absolutely. The defenses played great for both sides. Um, King City was able to open the offense up a little bit with Muff in the second half when a couple of injuries for Stanbury and the D-line really kind of affected them. I think Muff had 200 yards in the day. I think 150 came in the second half uh, when King City started to get going. It was a back-and-forth game. A couple of mistakes on both teams could have swung either way, but I think I just watched the two best teams in eight-man go at it on a Friday night. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we know what Parker Muff can do. He lights up every single week. But what's something that kind of surprised you uh, throughout this game? Uh, Stanbury passing the ball was really effective tonight. Um, Austin Swayback had a nice game, uh, finding his brother Tyler and then Marchick as well on the outside. I think Stanbury really opened up their game plan with the passing game a little bit today. And I just think it was a really fun football game. Both teams, I know they had things to work on going forward, um, but it was just two heavyweights throwing blows for four quarters. And it, was a, it was a blast to watch. Devin, we have about 15 seconds here with you. Just after week three, it's still really early, but I mean, what's eight-man football looking like for you right now? I think Stanbury and King City at the top. You could look at Drexel, North Shelby, um, East Atchison, kind of that tier below it. Um, there's just a lot of good teams in that middle range. It's going to be really tough for us to cipher through as the year goes on, but it's a, good, it's a great season so far. Eight-man football analyst Devin Albertson, thank you as always for coming on. Thanks, Chris. Now we're going across the river, Kansas, Riverside and Sabetha both looking to get their first wins of the year over in Wathena. Sabetha up 21-0 starting the third quarter. Matthew Garber hands off to Jonathan Renier to move the chains. Next play, Garber using his arm, throws a dime to the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Sabetha goes on to win this one 42-0 over the Cyclones. Other Kansas scores pass along to you, Ashley getting a victory, Centralia topping Troy 31-12. Mitchell, we have a surprise for everybody coming back. Do you want to do this? What is it? Play of the Week, and also Lafayette head coach Ryan Schroyer joins us next on Football Tonight. It was a battle tonight on the south side. Lafayette and Benton, the Irish getting in 28-14, going to 3-0, and the head coach, Ryan Shoyer, joining us. Coach, congrats on the victory. That was kind of one of those slugfest games a little bit there in the first half that I saw. Yes, it was. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, they, they Benton played hard. They had a great game plan. Uh, their players played hard and uh, executed some things, and it was a great rivalry game just as expected didn't expect anything less from them. yeah and and a rivalry game it's it's always expected to be those type of games but uh what was your talk to the defense uh, especially after it was tied just to get them to regroup oh we just had to fix some things and it wasn't just like one person it was a lot of people and uh i took the blame for that i'm like you know i gotta do a better job um making sure we know what we're doing and uh I made some calls that didn't always work out, and I took the blame for that. And uh, was able to simplify some things and have everybody do their job and do what they're supposed to do and do a better job doing it. And uh, made a couple other adjustments, and uh, the kids played hard, and uh, we figured things out from there. 
Coach, your team is 3-0 and on the year right now, and one of those is by forfeit, but hey, it's still 3-0. and Just the group you have, the confidence that I've seen and Mitchell's seen, we've all kind of seen this group play with, just how do you kind of keep them moving forward? Because this group is a confident group that knows what they're capable of, right? Yes, they're they're confident and uh, they're competitors. They they always they always want to win and they expect to win. Uh, and that's that's not always the case in football. It's not always the case in life. Uh, but you know, I'd rather I'd rather have somebody who's confident than somebody who's not. You know, uh, <clears throat> but they're they're a fun group, and you know, it's it's all about the kids making the plays at the end of the day, and they do a good job. Lafayette head coach Ryan Shoyer joining us. 3-0 on the year after the 28-14 victory over Benton and I. Coach, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, y'all. Good night. Good you night. too. And now the play of the week. Our play of the week honors going to North Platte Panthers. After an interception, Riley Hyde rips the ball away from the defender and gets it back for the Panthers. That's our play of the week. Incredible play. Just an absolutely incredible play. Insane. And we're out of time. Yes, we Not are. That's why we have a little bit of time. Yeah. You can make that throw, by the way, from last week. You, you can make the throw. We might have to go on the Isaiah field. Isaiah Howard, that yeah. rolling goes right. You can make that throw. I, I like to think so, but we would have to get on the field. Quick, something that stood out to you this week. Uh, this week, just the close games, especially Stanbury, King City. I mean, we knew it was going to be close and yeah. a good matchup, but it, was, it beat my expectations. Benton Cardinals, 28-14 loss Lafayette, but that team came out for some turnovers early. Lafayette's a really good football team early in the year. That was a really fun game tonight. We'll be back next week with football tonight right here, same place. Mitchell's in that chair next week. I'm still in this one. Have a good night.